nga mana, e nga reo, e nga karangatanga maha, o tu a tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kātoa. Ki nga mana whenua, a tēnā koutou kātoa. Noko te honorei ki hare mai ki te whakanui o tēnei, hui hui ngā whakaherehera. Anei, oku kaupapa mātua mō te maru mahuki. Mahi tika, mahi tahi, mahi ake. Nō reira, ngā manākitanga ki runga i a tātou kātoa. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kātoa. Well, thanks for having me here uh, today and um, thank you to Graham and Julie from NZ Tech for the invitation to open uh, Tech Week 2022. As always, uh, the week has a jam-packed programme which will inspire, inform and energise New Zealanders up and down the country. As the Minister for Digital Economy and Communications, I'm hugely motivated to drive the adoption of digital technologies across the economy and to ensure that all of our communities are benefiting from the uh, benefits that come from the adoption of um, such technologies. You all know um, that digital technologies will underpin our future prosperity as a country and the way we live our lives. The programme for the week illustrates the breadth of potential uh, that sits right there in the sector. COVID lockdowns highlighted uh, for many people the critical role that digital technologies play already. Connectivity um, is critical to our country and it's critical to ensuring everyone can access the benefits. In that context, um, I'm currently progressing a digital strategy for Aotearoa New Zealand. It'll be the blueprint um, that lays out a path for the high emission, sorry, low emissions, uh, high value jobs uh, that are sustainable um, that uh, a low carbon footprint that will take us forward as a country and uh, allow us to participate in the wider digital world. We've got the potential, I believe, to be a leading world digital nation um, and particularly uh, with a focus on the ethical deployment of new technologies. The strategy will be framed around the pillars of trust, inclusion and growth. And many of you will have participated in the public engagement that took place late last year on the draft strategy. Can I please say thank you to everybody who took the time um, to play a role in providing feedback for the strategy. Um, the kōrero, the submissions process, um, gave us some really pleasing feedback. Um, generally, people supported the structure uh, of the strategy. Um, we heard how important this area of work is. And we also heard that we need to aim high and uh, not limit the ambition uh, that we have for the strategy. And consequently, I'm working actively with uh, my ministerial colleagues and we'll be releasing the draft, sorry, the final version of the digital strategy later this year. I'm keen to share a few of the themes we heard in public engagement. Overall, as I say, the submissions were very supportive of the proposed purpose, vision and direction of the digital strategy. But there was a strong, strong message we need to be ambitious and have goals uh, that reflect that ambition. The digital divide is real uh, and we need to invest in our people if we want to fix it. The strategy will be supported by an action plan which will outline the key initiatives which will bring life to our vision. One of these initiatives is the Digital Technologies Industry Transformation Plan or the ITP as it's more commonly known. Our work on the ITP is a key contribution towards the growth pillar of the digital strategy. Government's engagement with industry has been extensive in an effort to gain a deep understanding of what it would take to grow the numbers of jobs for more New Zealanders and to increase export revenue. We shared a draft of the ITP earlier this year uh, and that outlined different areas of opportunity for New Zealand to grow what is already a very important sector for our economy. For the record, in 2020, the digital technology sector contributed $7.4 billion to our economy. On average, between 2015 and 2020, it's grown around 77% faster than the general economy. Yesterday, uh, as uh, I think you've heard, I was able to announce that the government is allocating an additional $20 million through Budget 2022 towards the ITP. This funding will support two key areas outlined in that announcement, a focus on growing exports from the SAS sector and further development and activation of the New Zealand tech story. 
This funding over four years will enable the software as a service community to extend the great momentum that is already underway. As you know, the SAS community, or Kiwi SAS, is a knowledge and relationship network that connects business leaders and professionals in the SAS sector to build capacity, expertise, and ultimately to grow value. New Zealand, uh, as many people uh, watching and participating today will know, has a number of globally successful SAS companies. In 2022, uh, sorry, in 2021, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves, the SAS sector's export revenue grew by a record breaking uh, 19%. Um, we want to see this continue to grow. And the time to do that, um, the time to act to ensure that growth is now. So I was delighted to announce yesterday that we will fund the next three years of activities in Kiwi SAS. SAS businesses are highly scalable with low constraints to growth. To achieve success, the New Zealand businesses only need uh, a keyboard, an internet connection, and most importantly, uh, the right person sitting at that keyboard accessing um, the internet connection. With the right training and support, a career in SAS, as we know, is very accessible. Therefore, a second component of the SAS funding is to enable the delivery of short courses for digital skills development. And consistent with the wider work in the ITP, we're focusing on work-ready training that is highly targeted to the needs of industry and career progression for New Zealanders. This will feed into our work on implementing the digital skills and talent plan. The third element of the SAS funding uh, will go towards the development of a national database for the subsector. Good data is essential, and as well as providing us with the means to better measure the size and growth of the sector, it will enable benchmarking for particular companies uh, within the ecosystem to uh, measure and monitor their own progress against peers and best practice. It'll also be um, uh, provide resource for us to spot where emerging talent gaps are as we observe what is a very fast moving and quickly evolving sector. Beyond SAS, the second key initiative in the ITP that is receiving funding through Budget 2022 is the New Zealand Tech Story, a collaborative marketing initiative led by industry in partnership with government to promote our vibrant sector to the world. This marketing initiative will tell the story uh, to the world of what many of us here in Aotearoa already know. When it comes to tech and innovation, we punch well above our weight. We are solving global challenges and using technology in ethical ways. While many people overseas continue to think of New Zealand as a holiday destination, perhaps the home of hobbits, uh, most are not aware of how creative and innovative our sector is. Initial ITP funding was used to develop our tech story based on extensive research and market testing. I was fortunate enough to help launch uh, the tech story in February of this year. And through the website hosted by New Zealand Story, New Zealand tech firms and other interested parties can now gain access to various assets, for example, infographics and videos that can be used in their own marketing campaigns and storytelling. So do pop along to the website, um, we see tomorrow first.nz. Uh, at that website you can view and download the various assets for yourself. We believe this work will open doors for our companies when they're offshore, seeking to close a sale, attract a new recruit or to secure capital. There's also though a domestic opportunity to tell the story of our sector to our fellow Kiwis. This is a great opportunity to inspire more young New Zealanders into the sector sector needs to speak to and resonate with rangatahi, um, with young Pacific peoples, girls in education, people with disabilities, and also uh, across the regions of New Zealand as well. These key initiatives, uh, the, the international and the domestic um, aspect, will be important components of the ITP, uh, which is currently being finalised. Other areas flagged in the draft ITP uh, will continue and I expect to be able to share more details on these later this year. It is a journey of transformation and it will take time to reach our potential. However, I am confident that this new funding through Budget 2022 will take us uh, a good step forward. I look forward to seeing both the SAS community and the tech story ramp up in the months and years ahead. And while the digital ITP is a document, 
uh, technically. I believe its real value lies in the relationship that has been built between government and the tech sector. Industry and government partnering, uh, working alongside Māori, uh, academics um, and workers. That has been a very valuable uh, relationship that has been built through the creation of this document and I trust one that endures. It provides a forum for us to come together and identify priorities for the sector, collaborate on the co-design of practical initiatives that will bring about meaningful and timely change. There is a lot of work already going on across the sector. In addition to funded initiatives, the next iteration of the ITP will also tackle how we can better work together through coordination and collaboration for better outcomes overall. The priority areas of skills and talent development is an excellent example. So I want to say a little bit more about skills and talent development. The Digital Skills Report produced in January 2021 made it very clear that in New Zealand there's not so much of, as a skills shortage uh, as a skills mismatch. Um, a mismatch between the supply of skills from the education system, the training sector and industry itself with what is actually needed on the ground uh, in the industry. As outlined in the subsequent Digital Skills and Talent Plan produced by an industry-led group, group last year, a number of things are required to get the skills ecosystem working as a whole. We're working on this as a priority and I'm pleased that both skills and education and building Māori participation are themes for Tech Week 2022. Tech Week is built on the importance of networks, information sharing and cooperation. It's a similar story when it comes to implementing the ambitious work programme the government has for the digital economy. As evidenced by Cabinet's approval last year of 600 tech specialists through a border class exception, the government is aware of the need to take immediate action where necessary. I believe we can continue to bring about positive change for the sector, but we are going to have to work together. If you haven't already, I encourage you to read more about the strategy and the ITP online. The next 12 months is going to be action-packed. In the meantime, please have a great Tech Week 2022. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Well, welcome back, uh, and thank you very much, Minister. For great, great discussion. Two Davids on the screen now, by the way. That's really good. Can't can uh, have enough. I know exactly. <laughs> um, and, and we've got about f six or seven minutes for just to have a, a bit of a chat. And I promise I won't ask you any difficult questions. I wanted to dig in though on on the announcement yesterday because I thought that was a really timely mm -hmm. in terms of. Um, uh, obviously it's budget week coming up, it's tech week this week, mm -hmm. and I know as someone who works in government, the amount of work that you probably have to do behind the scenes to convince your colleagues in Cabinet, and particularly the Minister yep. of Finance, to release the, 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 the purse strings. Yep. So that's a, pre it's a pr pretty big investment in the sector. Yep. And, um, and it's nice to hear the breakdown of SaaS companies and the tech story. If we could talk about the SaaS um, companies first of all. You, um, you mentioned about the skills gaps and the, and the kind of promotion aspects. I mean, you get out and about a bit too. Can you tell us about some of the, the SaaS companies that you've sort of talked to and all the feedback you've had about the skills gap and what, how that fed into your decision making? Sure. Um, uh, I was actually yesterday for the launch at Aura and um, yeah. Parkable, uh, Toby from Parkable was you, there yeah. as well. He gets everywhere, that guy. He does, he does. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, this week just gone, I've, I've met with Kogo and, oh, right. and um, uh, had a chat with um, some others from the, the, the KiwiSAS um, board. Yeah. So I, um, you know, th that is one of the pleasures of my role, I have to yeah. say, going yeah. and, and meeting with companies. Um, I think, uh, you know, push pay not so long ago and so on. Th these companies are are, are everywhere. Everyone yeah. knows the, the the zeros and the the yeah. um, sharesies and so on, but but we've got a we've got quite a number it's and depth, it's growing. Isn't there? Yeah. Um, so uh, you look look. I think colleagues um, of mine, my ministerial colleagues, appreciate the the value of the sector, um, and I think one of the real strengths of the ITP and what's what's come about uh, and made it easier to persuade colleagues is that actually industry's really got behind this piece of work. It's, yeah. it's been a collaborative thing, you know, the development of the tech story as well. Yeah. Um, but but through KiwiSAS, the the input and the agreement about what the priorities are 
and it's actually, as you say, about um, skills training, access to talent. That is the number one priority I keep hearing over yeah. and over and over again. It used to, a few years ago, it was only a talk about access to capital. That's right. Now it's, it's a kind different of dissipated, story. Which it's, is it's great. It's great. There yeah. is more the, the infrastructure. You know, it's never perfect, yeah. but it, it's it's improved a great deal. That's right. Um, but access to talent is um, a That's key right. issue, particularly for our growing companies. And and a great thing about it, and what I love about it in the ITP too, and I won't suck it up by the way, I genuinely love it, is that you're also seeing this as an ex, as an opportunity to address some of the imbalance and, and inequities because the tech sector requires just huge amounts of talent and talent, as I love saying, is, is all across, evenly distributed across the whole country, but opportunity is not. And what we need to do is find those ways to get people who, are, who haven't got the access to the opportunity. And the, and the, the report that came out in 2021 um, from NZ Tech showed that there isn't a talent gap, there's a mismatch. Yep. And I think that's really great that you're, you're addressing that mismatch. Yeah, well, we need, what we need to do is, um, you know, we, we need the widest possible reach for grabbing talent. Yeah. And, um, you know, I do congratulate companies that have been proactive in the space, and, the, and there are yeah. many. You know, I, I look at things like um, Cordia getting into schools um, early, you know, yeah. um, uh, those who are reaching out to, to young women in education and so on, and, and reaching into South Auckland um, as some examples yeah. that I'm aware of. Um, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it's logical. Um, you want to you want to draw on as much talent as you can, that's but right. you know we do need to pre be proactive for the sake of the country and for the sake of the sector as a whole. That's right. And the session coming up after this, we're going to be talking to um, about the tech story, and and it's, so it's great to see in the um, in the work that you, the announcement yesterday that there's real admission or acknowledgement that we really need to tell our story globally. We've got a good story now, and as you said, industry and, and government and and. Uh, the tech sector have come together to create something great. Now we need to accelerate and amplify that globally. So it's really good to see that that's coming to the fore as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the, again, um, industry-led piece of work, very good piece of work in yeah. my view. Yeah. Um, the assets online, and I would encourage people to go along to the We See uh, Tomorrow First uh, website. Tomorrow First uh, NZ. There we go. Uh, <laughs> because you know you, the stuff that's there and, and the excitement we've already had feedback about yeah. it. Um, so I think speaks to the real value of that asset, and we'll only see that that opportunity grow. Is you know, like you, you think back to the um, the 100% pure um, narrative New Zealand's built. Yeah. Um, that started with a very small seed, but now it's something that kind of everybody knows. And I see the potential here with this story yeah. to actually you know tell the story more broadly, and that will benefit our companies. Yeah. Um, but you know, as as we lift um, wages and opportunity, weightless ex exports, um, sustainable products, uh, that has a benefit for New Zealand as a whole. Well, that's the key thing. I mean, for us, it's the the old <coughs> tyranny of distance challenge, which New Zealand has always you know worried about, um, particularly for physical exports, mm. is, is a challenge and supply chain issues, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The tech sector doesn't suffer from that particular challenge. It has different challenges. But one of them is you know, really promoting the sector. So, mm. I mean, I know uh, the trade mission that the Prime Minister and Minister of um, Trade and Export Growth went on Sing to Singapore and Japan a couple of weeks ago, yep. and the one coming up in the US next week, yes. they will be focusing on the tech sector as, as our lever for New Zealand to really showcase our, yep. our skills and talents. Mm. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Are you going to get on one of these missions? Do you get to go out? Oh, about? Oh, look, I've actually been out for a wee while, so I'm <laughs> not sure if they'll let me out, but uh, uh, here's hoping. Yeah, you know, well, it's good to see the world re-emerging. Um, and thank you so much for your time this morning and for the announcements that you've made yesterday. I think it makes a big difference to the tech sector. It shows that point about, you said, about government and industry really co collectively working together on something that will have a tangible impact for the yeah, country. I think we can, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to our story getting told, and I'm also looking forward to a future where uh, not just two Davids on stage, no. but some some Brawities, some we're Tavitas, a little bit, we're a little maybe a few bit Davinas, a, a few Davinas, That's a few right. Tavitas and some Brawities to join us and, um, exactly and right. we'll be away. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, thank Brilliant. you very much for hey, joining us. Thanks, David. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.